I'm at Christchurch Bay on the south coast of England, about a 40 minute drive from Southampton and I'm here having a bit of a bad hair day as it's really windy and really really cold. In this video I'm going to remind you about the process of longshore drift and we can see that longshore drift is occurring along this beach because there's a rock groin in the background behind me and that's trapping a load of sediment that's building up as a result of longshore drift. That's fine. Right, so here is the diagram of longshore drift. So what happens is the prevailing wind comes up from this direction and that means that the swash comes up like this, okay? So material travels up the beach and gets deposited here. Now due to gravity, the rock will slide back down at a 90 degree angle, that's called backwash, okay? The prevailing wind will then push it back up again, that's the swash, so it will travel up and then it will fall back down due to gravity and that's the backwash. A bit like a zigzag. Exactly like a zigzag, yeah. So here we go, swash, up with the direction of the prevailing wind, backwash, 90 degrees due to gravity. So explaining the process of longshore drift is about remembering three important keywords. Swash, backwash and prevailing wind. Starting with the prevailing wind, you can clearly see the prevailing wind's coming from over there, which is why my hair's blowing that way, and that's coming from the southwest. And the direction of the prevailing wind dictates the direction of the swash, which is the, the wave that travels up the beach. So applying what you've learned to exam questions is a really important part of your revision. So let's apply it to this question here. Study figure 12, a sketch map showing features of coastal deposition. Using figure 12 and your own knowledge, explain how different landforms may be created by the transport and deposition of sediment along the coast. So we've got different landforms that we need to know about. And we've also got to mention about the transport and the deposition. So let's have a look at figure 12 and it shows that up here we've got one landform and this is a spit. Here we've got another landform, this is a bar where a spit has grown across and joined two headlands, it's grown across a bay and joined two headlands. Down here we've got a beach, okay, and over here we've got a spit. So these are ones that I'd recommend that you focus on. And because it's worth six marks, I'd recommend that to get the full amount of marks, you wanna just focus on two and do them in loads of detail. Now I'd pick beach and spits to focus on because I think you can talk a lot about those. If you picked talking about, a, if you picked a bar, then it would be quite a similar explanation to how a spit forms. It would just be that it joins up two headlands. So I'd go for spit and beach. So it says, using figure 12 and your own knowledge, explain how different landforms may be created by the transport and deposition of sediment along the coast. A couple of things to point out on this map that they've given to you to help you out is a key. So they've said the direction of the prevailing wind, that's here, and you've got a compass point up here. So that we talk about the direction of the prevailing wind in terms of where it comes from. So it's coming from this direction, and this direction is southwest. So therefore the prevailing wind is coming from a southwest direction. So if the spit was forming, the prevailing wind would come up in this direction and the backwash would come down at 90 degrees, prevailing wind up in this direction, backwash down at 90 degrees. So let's have a go at applying it to a question. So the first thing that we need to do is identify where the landforms are. So we'd start off by saying the spit in the um, southwest corner, southwest and northeast corner of the map are um, formed by longshore drift. Okay, so I'm mentioning that transport formed by longshore drift where Sediments is carried along 
the coastline in a zigzag pattern. Okay, so you've identified the landform and you've said that it's created by longshore drift, but now you need to explain it in more detail using this resource to help you. So the prevailing winds, um, blows from the southwest, which determines the angle of the swash. Um, so now we need to describe what the swash does. So the swash pushes uh, material or sediment, pushes sediment up the beach and the backwash uh, pulls sediment back at a 90 degree angle. So, okay, so pulls it back down at a 90 degree angle. So these bits have formed um, where there is a change in the direction of the coastline. So we can see here the direction of the coastline has changed here and here. Oh, there goes my T almost. Um, and then we need to talk about deposition. So deposition uh, has occurred. Um, so why is deposition occurred? So deposition has occurred in the um, shallow. So this water here is possibly shallower in shallow in the shallow and sheltered water due to a reduction in energy. Um, and lastly for the spit, we can see it's got a curved end. So then we'd say strong winds and waves have curved the end of the spit. Okay, now you can see that I've run out of lines here and that doesn't mean that that means that you need to stop. It might be that you need to use additional paper to be able to complete the rest of your answer. Okay, so here's my additional sheet of paper. And lastly, I need to explain how this beach has formed. So what I'd then do is, again, I'd need to describe where the beach is. So I'd say a beach has formed. Uh, well, let's describe where it is in relation to something else. Maybe describe it where it is in relation to the river, perhaps. So a beach has formed um, southwest of the river's mouth. Um, and remember beaches are formed by constructive waves, so let's explain those. So constructive waves, so constructive waves, um, swash up uh, more material Hold on, swash more material or more sediment up the beach, uh, then they backwash away. So this results in deposition. Um, 
So more sediment, and maybe let's talk about how more sediment has built up. So we can say more sediment's built up on this side than on this side, because you can link it back to the prevailing wind. So you can say more sediment has built up on the, what corner is this? Northeast corner. Northeast corner of the beach. than the southwest corner uh, due to the prevailing wind pushing mat more material in this direction. So due to the prevailing wind pushing more material in this direction. Okay. So we've got our initial answer here. Let's just proofread it. So using figure 12 and your own knowledge, explain how different landforms may be created by the transport and deposition of sediment along the coast. Have I talked about transport? Yes, I've talked about longshore drift. Have I talked about deposition? Yes, I've talked about where there's a loss of energy. So a spit in the southwest corner and the northeast corner of the map are formed by longshore drift where sediment is carried along the coastline in a zigzag pattern. The prevailing wind blows from the southwest, which means, uh, sorry, which determines the angle of the swash. The swash pushes the sediment up the beach and the backwash pulls sediment back down at a 90 degree angle. These spits have formed where there is a change in the direction of the coastline. So, deposition has occurred in the shallow and sheltered water due to a reduction in energy. Strong winds and waves have curved the end of the spit. A beach has formed southwest of the river's mouth. Constructive waves swash more sediment up the beach than they backwash away. This results in deposition. More sediment has built up on the northeast corner of the beach than the southwest corner due to the prevailing wind pushing more material in this direction.